Okay, Google, turn on the blender. Hi, I'm Zach, and this is Bite Size. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to set up a $5 Wi-Fi smart switch. If you've been watching my channel for a while, you'll know that I'm really into home automation. I try to automate as many things as I can, which so far includes my lights, my thermostat, my door locks, and even some security elements like motion sensors and window sensors. When it comes to automating things that plug into outlets, I haven't found a good solution until now. When I first thought about controlling appliances, I looked for an off-the-shelf Z-Wave outlet. These were a little too expensive for my budget. The alternative that I came up with was to build my own. I have been playing around with a $5 Wi-Fi chip called the ESP8266 for several years. This chip is a game changer in the embedded Wi-Fi world. It is a microcontroller with a full Wi-Fi stack built in. It has allowed me to make IoT devices for a lot cheaper. My plan was to use the ESP8266 to control a relay which would connect and disconnect a load plugged into the wall. If you don't know what a relay is, I made a video on what it is and how to use one. Click on the card in the upper right hand corner. I built a prototype of this design and got it to work, however it wasn't very compact or industrialized. It was around the same time that I started to hear whisperings of something called a Sonoff Wi-Fi smart switch. This device takes an ESP8266 and pairs it with a relay inside a nice injection molded plastic case. An app to connect and control the device is available in the App Store and is compatible with my Google Home. The best part about the Sonoff is its price tag. All of this is available for less than $5. Since I can't even purchase the same components for that price, trying to make my own became pointless. Plus, I don't even have to write my own app. The first thing you may wonder is how to use this device as a switch. How does one plug in the device that they actually want to control? The Sonoff Wi-Fi smart switch needs to have a power extension cord connected to it. This may scare some people off, but I'm going to show you how easy it actually is. I purchased this 6 foot extension cable from Home Depot. If you go during the holiday season, like right now, they have these on sale and you can get them for about $1.67. Take a pair of wire strippers and cut the cord about 18 inches from the female end. Strip about a quarter inch of insulation from the ends. The male end of an extension cord is polarized. That means it can only be plugged in if the orientation is correct. The two wires are called neutral and line. In the US, the neutral prong is a little wider than the line prong. If you look at the cord, the neutral side often has little ridges running down the whole length. Once you've identified the neutral wire on the male side of the extension cord, look for the word input on the Sonoff switch. You need to insert the neutral wire in the terminal labeled N and the line wire in the terminal labeled L. You may need to loosen the screws before trying to insert the two wires. Tighten both screws until the wires are snug. Now take the female end of the extension cord and locate the neutral wire again by looking for the ridges. Repeat the same process as before by inserting the neutral and line wires, then tightening the screws. At this point, give the extension cord a gentle tug to make sure that the cord doesn't pull out. After both sides of the extension cord have been secured, replace the covers and tighten the screws. Each cover has a little set of teeth that will bite into the cord. This provides some strain relief. And that's all there really is in terms of assembly. The Sonoff switch is now ready to be used. Plug the extension cord into the wall and find something that you want to control and plug it into the other end of the extension cord. The Sonoff Wi-Fi smart switch is controlled using a free app that can be found in the App Store. I installed it on my phone and registered for a new account. This app has a nice and clean interface. To turn off the device plugged into the switch, you simply tap the power button. I'm pretty impressed with the response time, which, if I had to guess, is probably less than 250 milliseconds. It might be interesting to measure that in a future video. So what exactly is going on inside the Sonoff switch? Let's open it up and take a look. You'll notice that at the heart is an ESP8266. The firmware running on there allows the app to send TCP requests to turn on and off the large relay. If you look along the edge, you can see that the line wire goes in and comes out of the relay. The relay interrupts that connection, which turns the lamp on or off. I believe that the code is open source and that some people have actually modified their code to fit their needs. That's also something I want to look into for a future video. So now that I know what this thing looks like on the inside and I can control it using the app, it's time to integrate it with my home automation environment. I'm going to add it as a home control device in Google Assistant, which will allow me to issue commands using my phone or Google Home Mini. I can give each switch a nickname, which Google Assistant will use to identify it. This allows me to do this. Hey Google, turn on the fan, lamp, soldering iron, oscilloscope, and blender. I have to say that this thing blows everything else out of the water for only five bucks. 
My only complaint is that I wish it had some way to monitor and report the energy consumption of whatever device is plugged into it. In a future video, I may try to hack the Sonoff switch to add this feature. For anyone who has an Android smartphone and wants to get into home automation, I would highly recommend picking up one or two of these. When people ask me how to get into home automation, I often recommend to start with one device and build up from there, adding one thing at a time. That about wraps up this video. I do tons of projects like this. Click here to watch the video where I show you how relays work. Or you can click here to watch my entire home automation playlist. Here on Bite Size, I make lots of project videos. If that's something you're into, be sure to click this subscribe button and YouTube will start recommending you more videos like this. I appreciate you watching and I'll see you next time.